Hello and welcome back to another open source workplace video. Uh, today I'm glad to have back uh, Jonathan Schultz. Jonathan Schultz is of Onyx Equities. Jonathan, how are you doing, sir? Doing good. You know, now it's what week eight. It's, it's, Something uh, like that, man. I've oh, lost I've lost track of the weeks. Weeks are going fast. It's amazing. At the beginning they went really slow. Now they're speeding up. It's uh, they're yeah. all the days are blurring together. Yeah, no, it is. And, uh, you know, what I find really interesting is as time evolves, I'm actually looking forward more to the weekends where initially it was like I was dreading the weekend because I didn't know what I was going to do, you know, but I think we've all found ways to to spend time during the weekend. Um, so I want to start with a question before we get into uh, something that's really interesting. I think it's going to be a quite a dynamic kind of video for us. But uh, uh, what I want to ask you first is, you know, as we sit here today, uh, we're in the middle of May as we look forward for the next 12 months, is there anything about that sort of prospect the next 12 months that excites you? Yeah, so, I mean, listen, I'm very much into technology, as you know, and I, I love the, the, all the new ways we communicate, become efficient, and, and, you know, change a little bit of how we do things as we progress. But I'm like a people person, so I can't wait to actually get back out and communicate with people in person. Uh, as a human being, that's part of what makes, you know, at least me happy. Uh, and I miss it, I really miss it. So I'm looking forward to over the next 12 months, you know, everyone getting together in the way that we can, you know, obviously being safe and, and living in a new way, but I, I can't wait for that. I'm looking very much forward for that. Hopefully it's not 12 months and, and it, it happens sooner over time, but. I'm, I'm really much looking forward to that. And uh, I, I feel your energy coming out as you talk about it, John. It's actually almost feel like you're coming through the screen to sort of <laughs> shake my hand or something, as you say, you know, so it's pretty it's cool. It's like Mike TV, you know, and Willy Wonka. I'd love to be able to pop back out of the, out of the screen if it's somewhere real. That would be cool. That yeah. would be cool. Maybe that's a technology you can invest in, but uh, we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Um, so as I said, well, I want to do something a little bit different. And, and to be honest, like, the idea was yours, and I, and I loved it, and I sort of jumped on it. Um, and what I wanted to do today was sort of, as, as we sort of think about the return to work and all the new technologies and the ways technologies can sort of help alleviate some concerns, or we can innovate to create a better workplace environment or a building environment for its occupants. Yep. One of the things I wanted to do was sort of go through a day in the life of a building. Yep. So its occupants and think of some of the ways technologies can help alleviate touch points. So think about it, areas where people's hands touch a surface, a part of the building, or be it a, something within their work environment. And uh, I sort of want to go through, and as we sort of suggest some, or talk about the specifics, then we'll sort of think about uh, what, is, what is an alternative technology solution to that. Yeah. So what I wanted to do is let's start with, I arrive at a building, and today I've typically got to push through a revolving door. What, what sort of technology solution do you think could be used in the future? Well, you know, and, and these are all just, I guess, ideas everyone's bad yeah. enough. You know, nobody truly knows exactly what to implement. You know, everybody has to understand things cost money. So you, you got to understand what those uh, parameters are. But just if you're just thinking, uh, you know, on all these different issues, so coming through the turnstiles, I mean, if you look at the airport, right, it's automated, it's automatic. I mean, they have it where mm -hmm. five or six or 10 people can fit into that area, you know, so maybe mm. you that smaller and, you know, you only allow two people to come in if it's six feet apart or one, but you're not touching anything, right? right you go right. to like a target, the door is open this way. You don't have to touch it, right? So yeah. They have a double set of doors for airflow, right? Because you don't want to, especially in the winter, open up and then air comes in and out and it, it and that's, you know, will make the building less efficient. So those are two things that are out there. It's just how do you, you make them work uh, at your building? I love the idea of the, of the airport because you're so right. People coming through with it, with their suitcases or whatever it is for the office, then it just nicely yeah. still no gives the same feeling. Anything. No one's touched anything. Yeah, yeah. And that's great. That's great. So we'll get through the, 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 I get through the uh, doors, I'm in the lobby, and I'm going to get down to the barriers, turnstiles, whatever you want to touch, you know, call them. And today I've got to use my key pass to actually touch and actually allow me through the gate. Do you think that would be replaced or is there something else in other ways we could? We like could do? The whole industry has been working on lots of new technology for access, right? You know, a lot of it's been where you, you touch an iPad, 
there's been, uh, you know, technology that you actually just, you know, show a QR code. So mm -hmm. I think that technology is there and, you know, now it just has to be implemented. Things take time so that you'll walk in and it'll, you know, it'll be on your phone. You'll show a cue car, you'll go through the turnstile and you can, you can, you know, basically get up to your floor. Some systems have it where it knows who you are and then it also will allow the elevator uh, to, to, to know what floor you're going on. So you mm. don't have to touch the elevator, but anything and everything touchless is going to be thought about. It's just, how do you do it? You know, some elevators are older technology. It's not as easy to switch over. So there's a lot of thought. You gotta be very thoughtful on how to do this. And you may do it in a lower tech way than a higher tech way, but there's always innovative ways to be able to do it from you're, you're seeing them everywhere. Those little, uh, keys, that uh, yes. you know, they, they don't take, I guess, infection or, or uh, disease on them or whatever. Uh, yeah. Literally can just not touch anything, right? So that's a more low tech way. It's not as, ex as expensive. So again, you just gotta be, you gotta be creative. Yeah, no, that's great. And I love the idea of being able to connect the, the actual turnstile to the elevator. Uh, um, so then where that technology isn't enabled, how do you perceive or how could we fix the elevator situation, which is going to be the biggest, biggest headache, I think, for, for high rise, high rise. Uh, I mean, I think problems. you're going to have to, li you know, limit how many people go up and, and actually, you know, there's going to be maybe things that go over the keypads, you know, that you sort of like, I don't know, where you pull a sheet every time you yeah, touch, yeah. you know, you, you, there's, you're going to have to be creative or maybe someone's in the elevator, you know, touching the, uh, just like the olden days. Uh, oh, the freight elevators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. In, in there. I yeah, mean, yeah. again, it depends on the size of your, your elevators, how many floors, uh, everyone's store is trying to figure this all out. Got it. Got it. Do you think if we get to the point where maybe you could do it on your phone or do you think that's just, if you're going to do it with a QR code, then you might as well, it's the same process. I think it's the same process. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, it depends on, I guess, the level of your equipment at this point. So there's going to have to be a lot of investigation to look at like what you have, you know, what, how old your elevator. I mean, this is all going to have to be thought through. Got it. So then I come, I'm up the elevator. I'm in my lobby. I'm trying to get through to my space and I have a little, again, another security card that's got to go to the allow me access. And then today I've got a, a door handle. I pull the door open. Um, how do you think that could be addressed with technology? There's kick plate technology that, you know, you use your foot, uh, mm -hmm. you know, attach that to door jams. Maybe we're going to have to keep more doors open. I mean, again, there's low tech and yeah. there's high tech. And right. I think we're just going to be creative so we can do it in, in an efficient way without going overboard, right? So there's gonna be some, you know, tenants that maybe want, you know, different styles of how they enter the building. Maybe they have multiple floors, right? So they'll be able to do different things. But, you know, as long as you don't touch the door with a kick plate, that's fine. Uh, you know, there's probably technology out there that will allow the door to open, right? With, with some type of app, you know, and, and again, these all have to be researched and thought through. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great clarification. So I'm through, um, and and again, it, you sort of touched on it, but I just want to highlight because obviously many organizations they actually have separation door separation between departments, special departments behind closed doors, just because of whatever it is they do. You know, you think of the HR departments, the finance department for, as examples, and therefore you know organizations may need to look at how they actually have those those doors, be it a kick plate or automatic open, as you suggested. Um, and then obviously, so I get to my desk, everything's done. And okay, I want to get a cup of coffee. How, how do you think those sort of things are going to take place? Because that, yeah. that's a hard one. I mean, yeah. I've, you know, I've been thinking about that myself, right? It's like, it's a central place that gets crowded, that people make their coffee. You're touching, you know, the handle if, it, if, it's, a, if it's a large pot. You know, you have all these machines now that, you know, Keurig's, so, so maybe Keurig's designing something that's from an app that instead of actually hitting the buttons, the app will connect to the Keurig machine, right? All you have to do is grab a cup that, you know, nobody touched or even bring, you know, your own plastic or paper cups. Uh, I don't know if that's, that's out there yet. Or you, you may just have to have a, your own barista where, you know, someone's actually the only one touching the coffee pot the whole day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
where you come up, you say, I want this type of coffee with, with milk and sugar. It's done. You take it and you go back. But I, you know, it depends on the size of your office. You know, it depends on how many people are in that office, but you know, all the way down to these little things that we don't realize we touch every day. I mean, just the fact that we didn't realize we touched our face, what, 500 times a day? I'm hearing all these statistics. That, you know, now they're going to be trivia questions that you'll actually maybe know the answer. Uh, it's so uh, true. It's so yeah. true. It's so true. And, and, and the other side of it, so like whenever you go to that pantry or kitchen area, right, one of the things we're going to be conscious of is keeping that physical distancing. And I'm going to sort of think and beyond. I'm not thinking about masks. I'm not thinking about people wearing gloves or anything like that. I'm sort of, do you think there'll be technology that allow us to, know if we get close to somebody almost like you you sort of think about your phone little beeping sounds or whatever it is to sort of manage right. that distance so, so i i was thinking about that as an idea i think a month ago and a friend of mine just sent me somebody in italy for factories created a watch that will buzz if someone's six feet in your mm. surroundings it literally will buzz right so it has sensors in the watch and they're using it on the factory floor because Everyone's running around, you know, it's a large facility and it's just making you aware of what's going on. Now, can that happen in the workplace? I'm sure it can, you know, mm -hmm. it would have to be something that obviously is inexpensive, right? Because, it, you know, it's, it, it can't be an expensive watch that you have to, you know, all buy or give out to. Right, right. But I think, you know, that I thought that was interesting. And yeah, no, that is, it is. Using it, actually. Yeah, really yeah, no, that. Right, it's not doing right. anything else except like making you feel safe in your six feet circumference and i think you know a lot of it's going to be that because like once you know the rules in anything in life from a game from work just how you interact in any organization you're in then you can play by those rules so because we're all trying to invent them create them understand them we're reimagining every, look what we just did. I mean, actually to have to think through from, like those were just things that you just did automatically. Now we got to think, how am I doing this? How am I touching this? You know, it's a little overwhelming. So I think once we know how to achieve those things and whatever tools that come into our life that make us do that to feel safe, and we could take our own personal responsibility for ourselves to, play by the rules and have the right tools, right? I didn't mean to rhyme there, but I did. Uh, I think that that's when people will start making that where, like when you get in your car and you drive down the road, you know how sometimes you're 20 miles and you feel like, how'd I get here? That's what you want all of this stuff to feel like. You, you don't want it to be intrusive, overwhelming. You just want it to feel natural. So the more natural we can make all of these things we're discussing, I just think in life, everything you practice, you get good at. Practice becomes, makes you more natural at it. Mm -hmm. you haven't had that chance yet. I'm looking right. forward to that chance. I mean, obviously we've been cooped up for a very long time. We all want the chance to, to go out there and, and live our lives in this new way and help each other create that. So I'm looking forward to it. And I believe, you know, whatever tools we think of, just like any product or service, they're going to be iterated and iterated. The first, you know, version one is going to end up being version six, version seven, version eight, because as we do it, we're going to learn more, we're going to pivot, we're going to iterate, and then we're going to become what we think is the best version of all this new stuff we have to think about. And, you know, I'm looking forward to being part of that process. And, you know, I want us all to feel that we can go out and be ourselves again. And, and, in a new way, I guess. Uh, but you know, I'm hoping. No, that's great. And there's there's two specific areas I really want to push on as well to sort of cover in this, John. And one is the the conference room, right? So the conference room is one where you know typically you know, you go, you book on an app, it's possibly sitting either on your computer or it's actually sitting on, on the actual display outside the conference room. So people gotta come up and touch that. Yeah. Um, and then you go into the conference room and you basically got to start and activate the conference with a with touch button. How, how do you think you could solve those issues where people maybe didn't have to touch those? Well, listen, I, you know, it's already dominating our life in every other way, but there are such things called Alexa. I mean, voice is going to become a much bigger part 
of what we do. If we don't want to touch anything anymore, then voice recognition, which we've been working on for years, again, if you really look back now, not knowing that this is going to happen, and just look, cloud, voice recognition, face recognition, like all the things, broadband, connectivity, you know, now we're working on 5G, all the things that we were working on that was going to accelerate everything we're talking about in the future anyway, we're really going to have to look at it in a much more focused way now. And if you could talk to your elevator, if you could talk to your conference room, right, which already you're talking to your TV, you know, there's all different iterations of how now this connects to appliances, to washer dryers. I mean, IOT, Internet of Things. You know, we've been talking about Internet of Things now for years and sensors and there's lots of products and services that have been, you know, put together. I just saw something on Clear. You know, Clear. You know, first it was TSA, right? You had your mm -hmm. car. Yep. You didn't have to take your 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 shoes off. It was a different way of going through the airport. Clear for ten years has been working on, you know, your fingerprints, right? Now I hear they're doing something in health, and they said they were also going to apply it to office buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these technologies have been slowly, slowly getting adopted. You know, there's privacy and security and all these other issues we're going to have to grapple with. But there are ways to get completely touchless through lots of different things that are already out there being developed. It's just, just like any software that you put in your company and that we try to do in ours or any companies that I'm involved in that sell through to the enterprise. If you don't want to change, adoption is going to be really slow. You only change something when you need to, not when you want to. That's just the way our human brain works, right? You can put it off and it's like a big thing that you have to do. If you don't put it off, you tend not to do it. When you need to do it, right? You do it. I mean, we focus on what we need to do. So are these things now needs? We're all gonna see, right? Yeah. And then again, we don't know what's gonna happen with therapeutics. And you know, what is that gonna do? So I think we all just have to learn as much as we can. Be a student. You know, I love learning about new things. That doesn't mean I do everything or use everything I learn about, but I like to have the understanding and knowledge of what's new, why it could be better. And if we all do that and we decide, okay, these are things that it can apply, and everyone's gonna have their own little experiments going on at their buildings, right? They're all gonna try and do it the best they can. And I think more than ever in any time that I've been in the real estate industry, collaboration amongst our industry as a whole, as a group, as one, to me is very important. Like we don't need to recreate the wheel. We don't need, you know, you don't need to be that first person to invent something. Let's just try things, talk, you know, iterate, 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 and then execute. And, you know, the more you can talk to, people that, you know, I want to be around people that know more than me all the time, right? So I can learn from them. And just because they have a certain idea doesn't mean you have your own view that then you can apply, right? And right. different buildings need different things. There's no one size fits all for this. There's buildings with smaller elevators, larger elevators, smaller lobbies, larger lobbies, less, you know, less, less stairs, more stairs. I mean, it's just, we all have to just, you know, create through our own individual experiences, why seeking as much information from other people to see what's working. So, you know, I think as an industry, we're doing that, you know, I've seen more collaboration amongst people that normally, you know, you're competing with, or you, you really, they, you know, you didn't really speak to them as much. And so everyone's sort of coming together in a really, in a great way. So. Lots of stuff there, John, lots of great, great thoughts. The last one I wanted to touch on was the bathrooms, because I think it's probably the most complicated. Um, maybe it's not, but it just, it just feels like it's the most complicated because of uh, the issues and the concerns that people have on that space. So how do you see technology assisting with the use of bathrooms? Well, the, the faucets can be touchless. You know, uh, everything can pretty much be touchless in, in, in a bathroom, you know, from what's being developed. You know, if you go into stadiums or airports from the touchless paper towel holders to mm -hmm. Dyson has those amazing uh, air dryers. Uh, you know, maybe there's things you can do with the doors, right? That, you know, uh, you know, I know they don't go like to the bottom. Maybe there's a kick plate 
You know, these yeah. are things we're all trying to figure out. So there's no probably exact easy solution yet. You know, everything will take thought and and research to see what's the best paradigm. But, you know, you can have a kick plate maybe to get into the bathroom, a kick plate to get out, you know. Uh, so we'll what, have what about, do you think self-cleaning toilets would be a thing that come? I mean, again, they could. I'm sure, listen, anyone in any yeah. that knows they have issues of, oh my God, I don't want to touch that, is probably completely brainstorming on how they can do that. Uh, but things take time, right? So this is where low tech's going to meet high tech. You got to just do the best you can until something, you know, appears, right? Or something uh, is created and we'll have to all work together, you know, to, to find those things as fast as we can. Just, just like, you know, the world's looking for a vaccine. They're collaborating on therapeutics. I mean, look at the medical industry. I mean, the globe is working on this. I mean, imagine the brain power. You, you, you know, this is the, the, the most focused project I've ever seen in my life. And, and, and a lot of companies are working hard. They're collaborating more together. You know, you're hearing pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies, you know, now partnering with other companies in a way that they never did before to, to speed up the progress. So as you know, what you focus on happens. Mm -hmm. So as an industry, you know, as a society, if we stay focused and again, we all collaborate, things will happen faster, right? And that they'll happen where people can share all the success of whoever creates that next best thing uh, that, you know, is coming. And there's a lot of smart people working on it all over. So we're, 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 we're definitely fortunate to have a country with, with to spirit uh, that, you know, never gives up, unifies, you know, on projects when, when necessary and needed. And I, I, I mean, I'm seeing that. I mean, how about you? You seeing that? No, absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. yeah. seeing it all over the place. So that's the bright spot, right? In this, that, yeah. You know, yeah. We're all coming together to do what we have to do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I always find too, like when you take action, you feel better. When yeah. you learn something new that, oh my God, I actually may be able to solve this. Not that you can, right? Right. Because right. you never know till you actually put it into place. But as you take the little action steps, if you work on your little micro goals for every project that you work on, you know that your confidence builds, right? It, it, you talk to it about it with other people. You get input. You got to be open for. You got to really be open for input today, because uh, it's all new. Like no one could say I've done this for twenty years. Like this is how it's done. There is no way how it's done. We're all we're all we're we are all reinventing the wheel in a lot of ways, right? So you know we all usually like that wheel. You go get the wheel. You put it on, and you're you're good. Now you're good you know, to go. Good to go. Nice, no, uh, John. Reinvention mode yeah so many so many things to think about i'll definitely watch this back over and just i'm just like there's, there's so many other ways we could have went with this and so many other ways things that we could think about so if if anyone's watching and sort of wants to sort of drop in the comments anything that they think we've missed that we maybe want to come back and discuss later um that would be greatly appreciated but john i want to thank you um, for giving us your time and sharing it in an open source workplace right i'm trying to bring all these influencers together so that you know we can bring it to the audience alternative ways to think alternative views and in one destination where we've got trusted resources and uh that people can rely on so john look i thank you once again for for everything you're doing for open source workplace and i'm glad i can sort of and i appreciate share. what you're doing i mean you know what you said to me is the most important thing everyone bringing information together so that we can all learn so mm -hmm. the more we do it the faster we're going to figure everything out right and i know we all want that so yeah. uh, thank you for doing what you do no i appreciate it man thank you thank you have a great week john take care <laughs>